I mean, sorry to poke a hole in this, Peter, but window light isn't naturally diffused. What's up everyone, JD the camera guy, back with another video. Today I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different than what I've done previously, and I'm gonna be making a react video to some Peter McKinnon photography tips. I love Peter McKinnon's videos. He does such a great job of storytelling, and being that I primarily do iPhone photography tips and photography tips, I wanted to watch this video to give kind of my reaction to it, let you know a little bit of what I think about some of the tips that he's giving, and with that being said, let's hop into it. What's going on, guys? Alrighty here, I don't wanna cut it off too much, but I'm gonna start off here. First thing I just want to say, Peter McKinnon does an amazing job of filming B-roll. Right at the beginning here, he just has so many cool, like, intricate little scenes that he does to help add to the story, uh, storytelling dimension of it that I just absolutely love, and I just thought I'd comment on that, that he does a fantastic job with B-roll. Five things to instantly step up your photo game. Here we go, let's get rolling, let's get right into it. Number one, angles. No more hip shots or blind fire. We're gonna think about this. Angles are huge. Instead of just pulling out your phone or your camera and snapping the subject, be it an object or a person at whatever's the easiest angle, just take 10 extra seconds and think about where could this look cool from. Objects typically look really, really good or way better when they're taken from a waist level. So you're at the same perspective of the object. Or just Alrighty there. Well, with that being said, like talking about camera angles, I he's going in here. Um, especially if you watch some of like my TikTok and Instagram videos, like you know I talk about a lot about lowering the camera, lowering the perspective down, um, just because that's the cooler angle. Most people just take like photos at like hip level or even like uh, like chest level. Like they they're not really thinking too much when it comes. To taking the picture if they just put like a little bit more effort in and it doesn't have to be a lot like 30 seconds worth of effort like as much as like bending down closer to the ground to take a picture um, and it this also always depends upon what you're trying to take a picture of so one thing I recommend is always going out in the field and or not going out in the field my bad um, what you want to do is you want to like go online and look up a little bit of inspo and look at some photographers and look at some cool angles. Put a little thought into it. Maybe just move around to the left or move to the right, move to the back. Just take 10 extra seconds and think to yourself, how can I make this look better than just snapping it for the sake of just snapping it? Because we all know we get home, people compare photos and they always say, wow, yours looks a lot better than mine. Why is that? because we thought about those angles. That's number one. Tip number two, shoot through something. Instead of just taking a shot, maybe dangle something in front of the lens a little bit. Maybe if you're outside taking a portrait, instead of shooting the... Yeah, I absolutely love doing this on a lot of photos. Um, I recently did a photo shoot where I had one of my buddies, um, basically what he did and what I kind of ended up doing as well is like, I like put my hands in front of the camera. Um, I would do that, but I mean, I have a hand on a microphone and a hand on a phone here. So, but I mean like essentially what you're like doing and what he's talking about is like creating depth in your photos, which I 1000% agree with. Create some depth in your photos, like make them interesting, add, add, um, add something into your foreground and then have your subject be in the background type of thing. Um, it's just an extra added element into your like photos and stuff like that that really just helps go along with that storytelling uh and honestly it just kind of adds like a cool little extra flair into your photos people in the forest maybe back into the tree a little bit so you can see those branches and the leaves hanging down in front of the lens it gives you bokeh gives you nice out of focus elements and it adds that extra mm, oh those photos right at the, the end there were really cool that is otherwise missing if you didn't do it maybe shoot through the, the handle of a mug take two playing cards hold them up to the lens shoot through that essentially obviously being that he's in like an office type area this coffee cup and deck of cards analogy is mainly what he's using but i think especially most people who are doing like photography they're usually doing something related to taking pictures of people um more of the niche photographers will get into taking pictures of like random things and stuff in their house and stuff like that but 
overall, in this video, the only thing, honestly, I think he probably should have done is for some of these is, and I mean, I guess he did do it with one of them, but using like a, using a person to take the photos and come up with a lot of the ideas, I think would help bring that home, that point home a lot more, but nonetheless, still great tips. Shoot through anything, put an object in front of the lens and just finagle your way through so you can see the subject through whatever it is that's blocking the lens. That adds a huge dynamic. It frames your shots in a really creative and interesting way. Give that one a shot. Pun intended. Number three, think- That was cheesy. <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> Ooh, that, was, that was cheesy, but I like it. I'm here for it. Opposite. Let's say we're gonna go do a landscape shot. We are in front of Lake Louise. Everyone is taking the same photo. If there's a hundred people there, your photo might be better. It might be better lit, but for the most part, the composition of Lake Louise from those hundred people isn't gonna differ very much. And this doesn't just have to do with landscape photos. It can do with, let's say you're taking a picture of a deck of cars or maybe you're shooting a smartphone, maybe a book. Once again, it goes into some of the, the more, I guess you would say like common things, but I, at least with my following and stuff like that, people really love like the travel style of photos. They don't get me wrong, like people people like the niche type stuff. That's kind of some of my more like I don't know if I want to say base level followers or what I want to call them. Like people who consistently watch videos are like really like photography stands, and they are more they're interested in some of like the smaller things. But for the most part, you know, most people especially can capture the attention or get the concept of like travel photography. Um, what he says there about like a common spot. There's parts of that I like and then parts of that I don't like because I think that, you know, a lot of people go to certain areas to get the specific picture that they want and that specific picture might be a popular one just to kind of help them embellish that memory. Obviously, you can go about to other parts and take other pictures as well, but if you're going there, like, you really want to see, I'm trying to think, like, like if you want to see the Eiffel Tower, for example, um, it probably would just be a good idea to start off with a base level photo that you've probably seen of that. And then as you've taken that photo and you know you have a good one that you really like, then then adventure around and try other things. Just so that way you know you have one that for sure you're going to like. Maybe a pair of boots. It doesn't matter. It could be a living room. Try to think what the most common, typical place the photo would be taken from. So go, everyone stands in front of the, the mountain here. Everyone places the deck here. Get that in your head and then completely f*** it off. Think, okay, I'm gonna shoot it from the back forward. I'm gonna shoot it upside down. I'm gonna shoot it from the left, from the right, from above. It's these little things, it's these little tips that end up producing huge results. So just by taking 10 seconds ahead of time and saying to yourself, this is what everybody does right here. What is completely opposite? For I mean, to make a joke, So this is a, a three minute long, a five minute long video. I mean, it's not always 10 seconds just to kind of make a joke about it. But nonetheless, I mean, he is still right on and I love it about like changing the point of view, changing the perspective and stuff like that. Just finding new ways to do it and be creative with it. Try out new stuff, try different angles out and things like that, just so that way you can kind of get your own feel. Um, but if you follow a really good photographer, I mean, nine times out of 10, they're choosing the right angles for a reason. So it definitely doesn't hurt to use that angle and then try out some other stuff too. From what everybody does. And I'm gonna do that. You might surprise yourself. Hell, it could be shit too. Talk about lighting. Lighting is huge. Ooh, my favorite one, lighting. If your stuff isn't lit well, A, no one can see it. B, it just looks like it. C, there's no reason it has to look bad. Lighting scares a lot of people. People are thinking, oh, I don't know how to set up lights or I don't own lights. Yeah, so what he's saying here about lighting, I mean, this is, this is the tip I usually give to people like first. People will come and ask me about like camera equipment or whatever it is. I'll ask them what type of lighting they're using. Usually they're just saying, oh, well, I'm just using the sunlight. I'm like, okay, you know, if you're out traveling and taking pictures and stuff like that, I mean, there's not much else you can work with. But when it comes to like an indoor photo shoot, 
where you're taking pictures of a product or an item, like throw in some, use some lights. Like you could easily go on Google and just search up like photography lighting setups or photography lighting kits. And you can find some relatively cheap ones on Amazon that work pretty well. Um, I'll link the ones that I use down below. I don't get any sort of affiliate commission off of those at the moment. I'm sure down the road I'll end up getting some affiliate commission off, off of some of that stuff. But obviously right now I'm filming this in my car. So there's no the lighting I'm using is just natural daylight. Just because I think for this style it ends up working and I'm fine with it. So that's just kind of what I'm rolling with. But overall when it comes to your lighting it's super important and you want to be mindful of it. The solution is very easy. I'm probably going to do an entire video on this subject itself. Just move to a window. That's it. Just stand in front of a window. If you're shooting an object, just move to a window. Find the light, essentially. If it's dark outside, maybe don't take the photo unless you're trying to go for night photography. If you're trying to take a picture of something in a restaurant and the lighting's poor, just wait. Just do it tomorrow. You know, if it's grainy and it looks bad and you can't figure out the light, there's probably a reason you shouldn't be taking the photo right now. Unless that's your job and that's a whole other story. One thing that I, I like that he said there about like just go there another time, but sometimes, especially if someone wants to take like food pictures or something like that, it's dark. Um, one other tip I think that, that he could have gave here, I'm pretty sure he probably knows about this as well, but it's like if you're there with a couple people, um, have someone else whip out their phone and use their phone as a flashlight. That really helps out a lot, especially for your scene if you're trying to take some, like say if you're taking pictures of food or something like that, you go out to eat and you wanna take a picture of your food for your Instagram story or whatever it is. It's as simple as like grabbing another phone or one of your friend's phones, asking them to borrow it. Be like, hey, I wanna take a picture of this, you know, uh, you mind if I use your phone to use for lighting? And I've done that so many times. Some people might look at you weird, but um, if they do, you can go tell them to fuck off. <laughs> but let's hop back in. We're just talking about regular people taking photos on a regular basis, and we wanna up that quality. You're not gonna die. There's no fire. Wait till tomorrow. Wait for golden hour. And if you don't know when golden hour is, you can Google it. There's apps to show it. You can. Yes, he even talks about Google, the, the photography and videography master. Google. Ask Siri, hey Siri, when's golden hour? Window light is naturally diffused, especially if you're on a cloudy day, that cloud cover pro I mean, sorry to poke a hole in this, Peter, but window light isn't naturally diffused. I mean, if you have like, if you have like curtains or something like that, I guess it's a bit diffused, but if you're just talking like a regular window and then the sun just shines in, you're not gonna get that diffusion, but nonetheless, I'm not gonna sit and poke holes in everything he says, but I, I, sometimes I like to do that just to kind of be a smart ass. <laughs> but nonetheless, he's still killing it. Let's continue. It's like a big giant softbox, if you will. So your photo is probably gonna end up looking 100 times better and you're gonna say to yourself, damn, this actually looks incredible. You're welcome. Number five, placing objects into the frame that help tell the story. Maybe it's people, maybe it's something, maybe it's different objects. Let's say we're gonna take a picture of a deck of cards. We're putting it on a table. He keeps at it with the card analogy. <laughs> I mean, it makes a good it makes a good example for a video. Um, but I mean, I, I like what he says about framing, just being mindful of what's in your frame and what you wanna include with it. It's kind of boring by itself. So maybe we add a laptop. Now we're gonna add mm -hmm. a cell phone. Maybe we'll throw a sweater in there and a mug. Those things are just oh, yeah. into the corners, but that provides an atmosphere now. The picture's much more interesting. Those are prime it's not elements. It's focused on just the laptop. It's not focused on the sweater. And we've made that very clear by keeping those things to the edge. And especially with that, I mean, these are like things that, whether it's with a deck of cards or you could take that same picture instead of a deck of cards, you use like a phone or like something along those lines or a wallet or something if you want to do like a wallet product photography type thing, where those are all elements and things that help sell the product as well. That goes for anyone out there trying to be a product photographer. But they just add so much more uh, lifestyle. And like he says a lot, it adds story to it. Because now it's like, okay, this whoever this card picture I'm trying to entice into looking at and viewing, like there's this laptop that's included, there's this sweater that's included, and... 
um, other things are included in the photo. So it's just a better way to overall talk to your audience a little bit more for whoever is taking that photo, or, or I should say whoever's gonna view the photo. They're not the focus points. The deck of cards is the focus point. But we've added these extra elements to just create more of a mood, more feeling, more of a story in this photograph. And it took an extra 10 seconds to just drop these things in. You'll notice that a lot of these tips, all these things are very, very basic tips, but will elevate your photography, be it with an iPhone, be it with a DSLR, be it with an Instax camera, whatever. They are pretty easy to integrate into your photography and stuff like that. Uh, the the only thing is that like sometimes it'll take longer than just 10 seconds <laughs> it might take like a minute or two but nonetheless it's still really easy to implement onto your photography and stuff like that they'll make your photos better so try them out i think you're gonna get some mileage out of it awesome well yeah that was all the tips in the video um, I really like the video overall. There's just a couple things, just me being kind of nitpicky and trying to be a little bit funny there that I took off and was like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe not exactly 10 seconds, maybe a minute or two. But nonetheless, a lot of the points are pretty accurate there when it comes down to it. Um, and as well, like these are really good tips for like people who are entry level photography, they're getting into photography, or maybe even if they already know about photography. I mean, I didn't really know too much about lighting until probably a year after I had already picked up a digital camera. Um, and I didn't even touch around with lighting or even think about any of this stuff. So all the stuff he's talking about, it's just super good ways and super good things to think about to become a really good photographer. Now, that's been it for this video. I appreciate everyone who's made it this far in the video. Uh, check out some of the links below. I'll definitely have stuff to my presets available as well as some of my iPhone photo tip cards to help you guys learn to become a better photographer. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to like the video, comment down below what you thought, and then subscribe so that way you can see a little bit more of my videos. I appreciate it. Thanks. Peace.